Hi folks, once again this is Mike Lane from Hadville Will Travel, bringing up something that I had a student bring up, or <laughs> bring up something I had a student discuss with me the other day, which is at the end, which is how great of a magnitude of effect are we having doing certain forms of training, certain exercise, so on and so forth. Well, what I broke down to him, he's a long distance runner that was interested in how much strength training does he really need. If we have our total potential amount of gain, so that's that 100% we're able to make ourselves improve as much as possible, well that's probably going to be a specific amount of volume that we have to do. Now, the reality is, what we're going to see as far as the magnitude of effect, your first real training set is probably netting you somewhere in the neck of 40 to maybe even 50% of the total amount of gain that you're going to get from that training session. From there, your second and third set are probably going to get you maybe somewhere in the neck of, let's just say for the sake of argument, we're up to now a grand total of 75%. And that's just for the one set as opposed to three. But it's going to be those fourth and fifth sets, maybe even sixth, seventh and eighth if you're really advanced, to get us that full 100% potential. So if your goal is to be a really good long distance runner, you're not really going to care about your maximal strength that much. I mean, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to improve your running performance. You can look up the literature in that area if you guys are interested. Trust me, it, being stronger is going to help. But they've only got, just like the rest of us, so many hours in the day. So if they can spend a little bit of time strength training, that's going to net them maybe 50% of those total amount of gains that they would have had otherwise, then by all means, hit your one set to failure and call it a day, and congratulations. Now, that being said, on the other side of the spectrum, there's going to be a point where doing more work is actually going to be deleterious. You're going to actually have a lower performance because you've literally applied so much fatigue to that individual muscle pat or muscle itself or the movement pattern that we're going to take not just longer to recover, but just to get back up to that baseline. So we're not going to get that super compensation, which is our goal. So at the end of the day, kind of ask yourself, well, at what point, just like with all training, you're going to have diminishing rewards, or sorry, you're going to have diminishing returns. So when do we get enough that we're comfortable with the goal or the gains we're making? And when do we need to make sure that we're doing the total amount of volume? The other way to apply this is ask yourself things like, oh, I don't know, the diet. Where you can get folks to get really hopped up on the ketogenic diet is the key to health, paleo, vegan, whatever, mind you. End of the day, the biggest factor on where your body weight's going to be is strictly going to be the total amount of calories you're bringing in to how many calories you're burning out just from exercising your basal metabolic rate, thermic effect of food, and good old meat, non-exercise energy expenditure. So, non-activity energy expenditure, blah, blah, blah. But what we're going to see is you can be on a great paleo diet, but if you're pounding down 10,000 calories of salmon and sweet potatoes, which good luck, if you're going to try and do that, you're going to gain weight. And if you're eating nothing but ho-hos, Twinkies, and ding-dongs, but you're only taking 500 calories of that each day, you're going to lose weight. Now, the type of weight you're gaining and the type of weight you're going to lose is going to be influenced by your macronutrients, but the biggest effect, the biggest magnitude here is going to be strictly the calories in, calories out. So who gives a damn whether you're taking in your raspberry ketones or your acai or whatever the hell other superfood happens to be trending in that given moment? Find what's the most important. Think about when it comes to lifting. Is doing a couple clamshells, is doing, oh, I don't know, some of the wonderful, put the, I'll probably do a PSA about the, that stupid band thing you see around people's knees that think is panacea. Now, is it going to help mobilize you and get you ready to train? Yes. But the biggest magnitude of effect for increasing muscle size and strength is going to be your good old fashioned compound exercises through a full range of motion. Heavy back squatting is going to build more muscle than doing Jane Fonda's on the ground any day of the week. So, Take a moment, look at your training, look at your nutrition, look at your recovery. How many people are going to spend money building a sauna in their backyard, making sure that they're able to get into get Normatec boots, compression garments and otherwise, and they sleep on a garbage mattress with bad sheets in a bright room that's not really helping them. Find what's going to have the biggest amount of effect for your training and leverage that first. Okay? Look at your nutrition, look at your sleep. Look at your basic movements and how much time you're spending on those movements in your training. 
Okay? There's nothing wrong with doing some prehabilitation, rehabilitation movements. But at the end of the day, if we want to get 100% of our total performance, well, we've got to pick the movements that are going to give us the, big, or the biggest return on our investment, biggest bang for our buck. Thank you guys for listening to this. Uh, please like or share it accordingly. And thanks again as always. Bye-bye.